the Desert Tiger Podcast. All right, Ambush, we are here with singer, songwriter, recording artist, producer, I would say a renaissance woman in her own right, one Claire Follett. How is it going today, Claire? I'm good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Having a great day. I've actually... uh. We've spoken your name once before on this podcast when we had one Rosemary Lawton on the show, so I'm kind of excited to jump into your music here today. Sure. Awesome, awesome. And of course, what brings us here is your latest single now, which actually comes off of your 2020 album, your sophomore album, Reclamation. But So before we get to this new single, I sort of want to dive into that second album and sort of the growth process here so going into reclamation there it's it was a little bit of a weird year with the pandemic and everything else but i believe you're a self-producer is that correct did you produce reclamation i did yeah it was that was kind of my covid project while i was in lockdown was to kind of finish off all the songs i just i recorded in in my house so it was it was nice to be able to have that outlet and you know it became something bigger which is nice okay okay so were you already in the process of sort of putting it together when everything had started and the world shut down or where was where was the creation process at yeah so usually what i do when i'm putting together an album is i take all of the songs that I've written, like since the last album in this circumstance, because this is my second album. So every song that I've written since then, and I kind of pick my favorites and then I start to record them and whittle them down and, you know, just really figure out what fits together. So, you know, the songs had been written kind of before COVID, but I hadn't really been willing to take it super seriously until COVID. And then, you know, I found myself in this spiral of wanting to record everything. And yeah. Well, I mean, uh, suddenly everybody found that they had time on their hands where, as musicians, a lot of people were running around trying to play shows. And I know that you're still in university as well and a producer. So, like, trying to balance all of those things would be, like, quite the task. And then suddenly it's like, okay, and now we're just sort of stuck here. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. So you mentioned there trying to sort of... uh, pick the songs so that they have a cohesion, sort of like a feel. So what was that cohesive energy that you tried to capture here with Reclamation? Yeah, I mean, I started picking the songs and I was I was really just picking my favorites. Um, but I got down to a list of, I think it was like maybe 13 or 14, and I wanted to get it down to 10. Um, and I found that almost all of them were breakup songs. So at that point I was like, well, might as well make it a breakup album. So I essentially just picked the breakup songs and then I composed a couple of little like instrumental bits to kind of make it a little bit more cohesive and, uh, get like the concept album kind of vibe going. And, uh, yeah, so and that was kind of my process in, in picking them. Okay, so we're reclaiming oneself sort of after just that that breakup sort of thing where sometimes people go through after being a unit, being sort of two, they sort of have to refigure out who they're going to be moving forward. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I really love that energy there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, uh, it just kind of happened like that, I guess, when I was writing them you know, kind of ordering them and, you know, cause the first song on the album is super angry and I was like still in the relationship when I wrote it. And I was just, I was mad. But then this last song was the last song that I wrote actually. Um, so it worked chronologically and it's really about just like picking up and moving on and, you know, accepting what's happened. So it kind of worked nicely in that way. And then reclamation just kind of made sense as a title. Awesome. All right. Well, I would love to dive into a couple of these tracks a little bit further so our first taste of this album came a month before the album itself which released in october the first single crashing cars released september of 2020 so take us a little bit behind crashing cars there and uh what piece of the story this song tells 
Yeah, crashing cars, um, I always say is kind of like the catch all for for the album. Um, it's essentially a really long metaphor that compares um when you get in a car crash and everything is just adrenaline and you don't know what's going on and it's just like ah and then eventually you come back down to reality and everything is you know your car is wrecked and you're hurt and you know all that stuff and it's just kind of comparing that to a relationship you know where everything feels really great for the first little bit and then you realize that it's not and then it's over and you're like oh my god what am i supposed to do now so yeah okay so it's exactly just that that everything smashes it crashes and then just like am i okay how did i get out of this like what 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 happened (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) Uh, perfect title then i love it i love that very very much awesome thanks so with that first single in september of 2020 the second single now which just released here at the beginning of july there's a little bit of time in between those two singles was there a specific reasoning for this was it because the world was shut down what what was the thought process in sort of taking some time before releasing that next single I mean, it's like it it has totally been a weird year. And, you know, I think I myself and pretty much anybody who's put out music now is like, you know, because usually when you're doing up a budget, you've got like a big section of the budget that's just we're going to tour. We're going to tour and tour and tour as much as we can. And then we can't do that. So now we're kind of like, well, what are we supposed to do to promote this? So, you know, we're just kind of finding some smaller opportunities along the way. So like Crashing Cars came out before the album. Um, Then there was a lot of promotion around like the album itself. Cause I also felt really strongly like the album works as a unit, you know, and of course you have to put out singles because that's, that's the way things work. But you know, the, the album is, you know, a 32 minute or however long unit in itself and, you know, promoting the album itself was, kind of important to me as well um but yeah also it was just like what are we supposed to do i don't know we'll figure it out i guess Mm -hmm. no i kind of really like that perspective there because like you say trying to take that moment to make sure that the album itself sort of gets to have that illumination because in this sort of single this streaming this playlist sort of a world it albums do somewhat get lost because some people will release like a few singles leading up to it and then they'll release an album the song like the same day and then sometimes you'll see that where the singles will have strong streaming numbers but the album itself maybe is hurting in some of the other songs maybe people aren't really like discovering those other songs so sort of taking that moment to illuminate and shine up the uh the album itself to make sure it gets its time in the sun Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Wow. All right. All right. So now that that album did have its time, it's now time for now the song, of course. And <laughs> let's dive a little bit further into this track, what p- piece of the story it tells. And now that it's finally out, now that like it's going in, what has the feedback been like? All of that good stuff. Yeah. Um, well, now... The album is out on vinyl, and now is the last song on side A. Um, We were talking about it, and it just happened that it was in the middle of the album, so it made sense anyway. But we were talking about it when we were talking about how to cut the vinyl. Um, And it just made sense because it was kind of this end where now is kind of about really realizing the situation that, you know, the relationship is over. And that you have to deal with it and move on and realizing that you're totally lost and you have no idea what you're supposed to do um, and trying to kind of figure out who you're supposed to be as an individual. Um, and it was just kind of that, just like letting that sit at the end of the, the vinyl side just made so much sense. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's very not final, but it's also, it's a very, I think it's a very important track for the album to make sense as a unit. Hmm. Almost sort of like chapters where it's a nice close to chapter one and then we go to side B from there and then we get the other half, the other experience of things growing from that moment. Yeah, I think so. 
Interesting. I like how uh, the vinyl aspect of things sort of played a role into that. Mm -hmm. So is this your first time releasing vinyl or did you do vinyl for the first album as well? Yeah, the first album, um, I did it independently. So, you know, I, I just didn't really have the resources to, to do vinyl. I only had CD for my first album. Um, but I've had lots of really great help and assistance and financial assistance and otherwise assistance on this album. So I've been able to do, we did vinyl and CDs and shirts and hoodies and hats and masks. And we did so much stuff. Um, and it's been really, it's been really cool to be able to kind of branch out into things. Cause like people don't buy CDs anymore, which is something I'm realizing more and more as time goes on. So it's nice to be able to have, you know, a couple different things and people love vinyl. Like I love vinyl. So it's very exciting to have my own stuff on vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's kind of crazy how vinyl has made its comeback and then CDs have sort of like gone a little more to the wayside and then like, but vinyl, which like it's a little more restrictive in form just cause like you can only have it in so many places, but like people have fallen in love with it again. And it's sort of, it's kind of nice to be able to just sort of hold that piece and just like actually appreciate it. For sure. Yeah. It's like, cause my, the album artwork is a picture of my face. And if I hold it next to my head, it's like the exact same size as my actual head. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic. Oh my goodness. So obviously we're still sort of working through this specific album cycle. So is there any other plans for uh, Reclamation before we sort of move into the future here? Yeah, I mean, you know, I live in Newfoundland and Newfoundland has been really, really lucky with COVID. Um, we've only really had two shutdowns and the second one was pretty short lived. Um, but other than that, like we've been able to gig pretty much as much as we were able to before the pandemic. So I've been doing lots of shows and stuff, um, probably more than I've ever done before, which is really, really great. And I'm very grateful for that opportunity that we have here in Newfoundland. Um, but yeah, I think right now we're just kind of, we're just kind of pushing. We're trying to gig as much as we can, you know, we can't really do a whole lot of touring right now. Just cause, you know, it's still a little bit up in the air, but, um, yeah, we're just keeping on, keeping on. Mm, well, you can't really tour, but you have the opportunity to, uh, get that live show um, set in place, work on it in front of an actual crowd so that when mm -hmm. that touring opportunity comes, you're ready for it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you mentioned there that you have had the opportunity to play live throughout this past year. So what has it sort of been for those fans of Claire Follett to be able to hear some of these newer songs live what has the feedback been like inside of that live setting it's been great really i find um i feel like this album where it's a breakup album is you know a lot of people can connect to it really easily because it's you know there are a lot of emotions that pretty much everyone on earth has some point in their life um, so, you know, I've had a few people come up to me and be like, yeah, I'm listening to this song right now to get over this situation in my life. And, you know, that's been, that's been probably my favorite part of, of anything. And, you know, of course, just like being able to play live and hearing people like sing along with me is just, it's so cool. I, I love that. It's, um, nothing really replaces that. Cause a lot of other groups, like it'd be the live stream or whatever, but like, Mm -hmm. A stream of comments and like other things is just does not feel the same as like you say, people singing along or that that fan reaction that you get, like that instantaneous feedback where you feed off of the crowd and they feed off of you. And it's just like this sort of cohesion and it's very beautiful. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you have continued to have that chance there and is we've mentioned you are still a student. You're inside university, not just pursuing one degree, but two degrees. You're a musician and you're also a producer. So what is it like to try and balance all of these creative hats and make sure that everything gets its focus? Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's been very difficult at times. Um, I find I just have very 
very strict, very regimented schedules. And, you know, it's just kind of, I do my best. And, you know, sometimes I got to say, I'm going to take a lower grade on this one, or I'm going to finish this mix maybe a little too early. It's only a rough mix. It's okay. You know, just kind of cutting myself some slack has been, has been helpful, but you know, I, I never compromise my work, you know, for legal reasons, like, you know, I'm doing my best. I still don't, you know, I can produce, I can produce good content whenever I need to. I never skimp on a final version, but if it's like a mediocre version, I'm like, "Mm, good enough bounce for now, you know? Okay. So it's just, it is, it's making sure that everything has the polish, but not overthinking every single step of the process because once you start to overthink one thing you start to overthink everything and then then it piles on yeah i used to be like that really really bad and it was just it was not sustainable so i can't do it anymore but uh yeah i i still i do my best (laughs) well that's all that anybody can ask of themselves so i'm glad to hear that you're keeping it up (laughs) thanks (laughs) awesome awesome well i have had a blast chatting so far about this album this new single and everything else i have one last question for you claire are you ready for it sure all right so we have discussed your growth into as an artist into this breakup album powering through the pandemic to make sure that you're getting everything done with this album making sure it gets its time in the sun being the producer and all of these other things. So what I would like to know now is this past couple of years of building to this moment to where this new single is finally out. How has this time helped you grow as a person or what has it taught you about yourself? That's a great and very deep question. (laughs) Um, You know, I think just really teaching myself to sit down and just do things because I like them because, you know, I, I love making music. I love recording music. I love performing music. Um, and you know, for a while it it was, you know, I kind of was like, oh, I have to do this because this is what's marketable and this is what people will like, but, you know, kind of really allowing myself to just sit and say, I like this song. I'm going to put this song out because I like it. And I think it's, you know, just doing things that make me happy and you know just really allowing myself that space to to do what it is that I want to do and give myself you know the joy that I feel I deserve (laughs) exactly it's um it's as they say you have to take the time to smell the roses and sometimes inside of this music industry it's you're in the studio you record the album you release the album you go on tour And then like everyone thinks that, oh, tour must be this wonderful thing where you got to see everything. But it's like, okay, no, but I've got to be in the next town tomorrow. And we live in Canada where like there's almost no short drives. So it's just it is like you almost have to take that time because it almost sometimes doesn't exist. So you have to almost take the moment just to appreciate everything. Right. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I I very much uh, enjoy that lesson. And I thank you for sharing it with us. And I also thank you for sharing the story of this album of this new single with us here today on the Desert Tiger podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.